For episode 43 here on Norm Nathan's Vault of Silliness, the label on the cassette reads June 22, 1996. Tom Howie is producing. We had just moved into new studios at WBZ, and let's just say, they were not ready for prime time. But that's what the overnight show is for, right? Pretty much a live, on-air test study. Let's call this one the Shipping Show. Stay tuned for the riveting explanation of that term in a deluge of technical silliness. Norm was on the previous night filling in for Bob Raleigh and played a rehearsal dumb birthday game. But this night, well, it's the first dumb birthday game in the new studios on his own show. We were all decked out in our uniforms to keep everything pristine and dust-free. And the chapeau accoutrement is magnifique. Wah. Westinghouse and CBS had just become the largest broadcast company in the world with a newly inked $3.9 billion deal. The players are as follows. Richard in Seaford, Delaware. Dorothy in Pleasantville, New York. Steve from Newton. Ethel in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. One of Norm's daughters, Sarah, was living there, but was leaving to return to the nest. Celebrated birthdays. Now I'll let you figure out which ones invoke the appearance of Tonto. We have Meryl Streep, Ralph Waite, Ed Bradley, whose airing leads to a painful revelation from Norm, Billy Wilder, Chris Christofferson, Bill Blass, and Lindsay Wagner. If you're looking for wisdom from Norm's Hungarian gypsy princess grandmother, look no further. And ever wonder what it would be like to have a talk show where you couldn't put a caller on the air? Norm gives us a fine example. Now let's start this with the question of the day. When did the box spring become a foundation? And uh, this is the dumb birthday game where we try to guess the ages of people who were born on this date. It's now June 22nd. Boy, does not time fly when you're whooping it up like this. Let's let's get a handle on who's going to be playing the game with us. Well, I'm pleased to say that the lovely Tony Nesbitt, my beautiful assistant, is uh, we'll be playing the game with us. Hello, Tony. Hello, Norman. I'm going to bring in uh, also our 24-hour traffic reporter here at the WBZ, the very lovely Jack Hart. Howdy. Howdy. So I thought both of you guys uh, just add just so darn much. I wouldn't want to miss the... Well, actually, last night was the first birthday game, but this is your show. You're not substituting. You're not filling in. This is your show, the first Norm Nathan show birthday game in the news. That's right. And th- that's right. This is the first... The first program under my own name, yes. my own copyrighted, patented name in this new studio, and I'm just so darn excited about this. It was, it was kind of nice you got a chance to rehearse under somebody else's show. That's right, too. If I screwed up, it was Bob <laughs> Raleigh's fault, because it was his program yesterday, and we did have a few problems. But, you know, I come into the BZ building, as you know, they added a big section on, and uh, this is, I mean, it's a huge building. We could be manufacturing important stuff instead of sitting around here lousing up the airways with silly talk. But but in any event, I feel like I'm not worthy of a building this big. I compare this with the first station I ever worked at, which was WCOP in the uh, Copley Plaza Hotel. We had one little corner place with two little dinky studios. And they may have had more more to it, but they never showed me the rest of it. And uh, compared to, I mean, I mean, this is incredible, this BZ thing. We ought to give tours. I think, you know, Westinghouse and the CBS or whatever we call ourselves now, we could we could make big bucks just uh, with tours. Maybe some will appear on magazines or something, some broadcast magazines. They'll take pictures of it, and they have to put it in. Because when it's all working wonderfully well, it's a fantastic place. Yeah, the only the only thing that it's bothers... It's mission control. It's NASA. That's what it looks like. It really it. is. It really is. The only thing that bothers me is the fact that they insist that we wear the WBZ uniforms. Well, you have to wear the, the uh, you know, the cap over your head. You have to put the stuff over your shoes. Sure. The whole room is dust free. Oh yeah, and plus we get the pants, you know, with the black stripe up the side that glistens in uh, uh, in the dark. Yeah. In the little propeller. <laughs> yeah, no... yeah, that's on top of the little shower cap that you have to put on. Yeah. Well, that's just uh, that's just for kind of comic relief, you know, so that 
people don't think we're taking ourselves too seriously. You know what? I, I like the the new uh, the new news uh, uniforms that have the little satellite dish that you wear on your head. <laughs> <laughs> you can get action news right back. That's to the right. Station it, it, it sort of spins around and points in the direction where <laughs> the news is taking place. That's right. Well, you've been wearing one of those for years, Jack. Yes, I have. Where, where yours spins around and points toward an accident. Yes, it does. And and for a while, yeah, you know, the first couple of years, it was it was really it threw my balance off. I thought that I had an inner ear problem, but uh, <laughs> but I got used to it. It says you have an arrow board on your head. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know, they perfected those little satellite dishes that we wear in our heads. Uh, they used to be big. Remember, they weighed about 40 pounds. Oh, getting yeah, in and out of uh, elevators and always, things. Uh, is awful. You can tell the people who've been here for a long time, they're kind of stooped over. <laughs> they walk sideways. Yeah, but now they've, uh, they've really updated them. And technological progress is so great. They're, they're really tiny things. They don't weigh more than probably uh, two and a half pounds. Yeah, yeah but the problem, they really are. The problem is the smaller that they've gotten, the further up that they have to go. You know, so, you know, you're walking along, you're walking to somebody else's house with, like, low ceilings, and you're forever ducking and stooping. And... Oh, you wear yours even when you're on civilian duty, do oh, you? Oh, yes. This, this, is, this traffic is my life. No matter where I go, I'm looking for traffic problems. You eat, drink, and, 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 uh, and, and live traffic. As, as a matter of fact, I had a lovely backup just this afternoon. Oh, sorry to hear it. Did you take some thumbs? Some pepper <laughs> <Yeah. ball? laughs> <laughs> oh, we're getting just as silly. You know, people have commented, Norm, that you do sound, you do sound different. Really on the yeah. air? It's, it's clear, but there's it's different. It's different. In what way is that? Do I sound better, worse, more sensuous, more ugly? Well, let me let me play you a little bit of uh, of of the new stuff just so that you can hear. it. Hello, I'm Norm Nathan, and we're bringing you the show. <laughs> the that's, that's just a little piece of tape that I said. That was the, that, that's amazing. I didn't realize you, uh, you, you taped all that kind of thing. Oh, but, sure. but you do you do love broadcasting so much I can see where you do that. Yes, I do. Yes, I yeah. do. I tape snippets of, of things from the radio all day long. I oh, didn't get a chance to talk to you too much, Norm. What do you think of this Infinity deal? Oh, I think it's wonderful. I think uh, if if we ever tick off the management here, we got no place to go. <laughs> That's what bothers me most of all. They own the entire world. I can't believe it. It's, it's not, there is no one bigger. No, there isn't. We work for one of the largest uh, broadcast, not one of the largest broadcasting corporation in the entire world. That's really That's scary because I, I don't think they can handle it. That's what bothers me. <laughs> I think it's too. Much. I think they're over their heads. <laughs> But, uh, Five FM stations and one, you know, AM. And we have they have under contract guys like Chris David Letterman, who's with CBS, which uh, this company owns now, and uh, both Howard Stern yeah. and, and Don Imus. Yep. I can't. I, I mentioned to somebody earlier that this and company you. isn't big enough. Yeah, than me. This company isn't big enough for Don Imus. I mean, not uh, 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 Howard Stern and me. One of us is going to have to go. <laughs> and I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to belt him. <laughs> I'm not the one that's going to go. I've been around here longer than he has, so tell him take off. I was going to mention with his long hair, but you have long hair too, Tony. And that's it. But yours is attractive, for God's sakes, and it's washed. Oh, thank you, dear. Yeah. You I, I just I was I was driving around yesterday. I was taking my car in to be repaired, and I had the radio on. All of a sudden, we have this special report coming up talking about a new mega merger, and all of a sudden, I hear Westinghouse's name and Infinity. I had a I had to pull over to the side of the road. I know, and I nearly threw up myself. <laughs> but but it's, no, but it's amazing. We, there was no, there were no, there was no hint of any of that. I hadn't even heard any rumors that we work here. I'm still waiting for my raise from last year, and this been <laughs> three point nine billion. Well, you can wait for a few more years, man. They can't, they can't buy all of that and pay you more money at the same no, time. No wonder there's been a delay in my raise. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's see who else is going to play the game with us. Uh, not that we need them, but uh, what the heck? <laughs> no, no, we have some good people. We have uh, Richard. What is that who's... sound? What's that? What is that sound? What sound is that? I, I, when, when you brought me on the air, yes? there, there was this strange, like a static sound and almost like a musical tone. And now, when you just put another call on, I heard it again. Oh, that is the uh, that is the dance music that is, I've got. Is playing that what that is? Yep. I'll have to hear it. Yeah, you can't hear it, Norm, but I hear it. And the here. Well, well, let me talk to Richard from Maryland. Then when we bring on Dorothy in New York, see if you hear it again. Okay. Richard, hi. Good morning, Norm. Good. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, but we've That's been just okay. sitting around and 
poking each other in the ribs with our elbows and having just a darn much fun. <laughs> and we're glad that you joined us. Where in Maryland are you? I'm in uh, Delaware in Seaford. You mean this, uh, Delaware, Maryland, or the state of Delaware? State of Delaware. Oh, you're actually in Delaware? Yes, sir. Hold on a minute while I update my list here because <laughs> we flash this on our big board outside so that people <laughs> driving by not only know the score. Now, did but, you just do something? Norm? What's that, please? Did you just do something? Well, no, I just talked with Richard. All right, no, because the phone, it cut out. What, what? The, the, it the, just went silent for a second. The broadcast went me, my voice just suddenly cut out? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hold on a minute. Maybe it's my phone. I think well, so. I heard you cut out for a second, Tony. You did. You just like the last <laughs> syllable of a word. I love, oh. com I love coming to a new place where we sit here and we... Well, we're trying to diagnose these bugs. Okay. We'll work them out on the air. Okay, I'm going to bring in, I'm gonna bring in Dorothy okay, in, in New York. Let's see if you hear that noise again. Did you hear that noise yes, then? Yes, I did. It goes... <laughs> It's Nancy. like, name that tune in three notes. Nancy, I didn't hear it. I heard it. Oh, oh Dorothy, did you hear right. it? I'm, I'm not, not going crazy. I'm not a professional crazy. exterminator either. It's not what? I am not a professional exterminator either, but what? I do think you have to get the, rid of the bugs. <laughs> I get rid of the bugs. Oh, I see. I see. I, get, I get it. I get it. How are you doing, Dorothy? Wonderfully. Have you met Richard? Yes. Just heard him, and I got the, and I heard something strange too. Both when you put him on and when you put me on. Yeah. Uh -huh. Was that like a kind of sound? I can't really describe it. Oh yeah. Well, I'm going to put Steve on. Let's see if we get this again. Steve is in Newton. Hi, Steve. You're on WBC. Did you all hear that noise? Yes. Was there something then too? Yep. Yes. Yeah. It must just be on the phone lines because it's it's not coming through through my headphones. Okay, so it's not coming over the air. Tom could write that up to the engineers. You know, we've got a shing sound on the phone. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe there's somebody typewriting typing somewhere. Yeah, that would be uh, S H H H H P I N G. Yeah. Ping. That'd be the way you spell it. And uh, anyway, how are you doing, Steve? What are you doing, yourself? Good. I thought maybe with all this talk here, we discouraged you to a point where you were just going to hang up and go away. And I'm glad you didn't. Well, it was pretty close, actually. Have you have you uh, played the dumb birthday game with us before? Sure have. Oh, oh, you sound like you played it a lot of times and lost miserably. <laughs> well, no, uh, actually I won once and lost a couple times. Okay, well you did very well then. Not to bother you again, Norm, but I can't hear them. You can't hear what? They're they're almost inaudible. The other callers. Really? Yep. Steve well, is almost guilty. Yeah, no, because I think people listening on... Can you hear them okay, uh, Jack? Yeah, I can hear everybody. Yeah, I think, I think Tony is really suffering from some kind of, <laughs> some kind of a physical problem. I really... I, 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 I've, no, because the last time I saw you, which was just a few hours ago, yeah. I noticed that your, the coloring in your face was beginning to be a little kind of limpid and funny. Oh, I have that. Those got a couple of mosquito bites. Maybe I... I'm going to get what? malaria. I understand that this year, not only are people coming down with sickness because of mosquito mites, but they are also hearing a shipping sound. It's, it's uh, yeah. in their ears as a result. It's called, it's it's called a shipping disease. It's uh, from Asia. <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact, and it's it's going around. And it was the, popular uh, in the early 50s with, uh, with a group called the Chords, I believe. <laughs> Native to the Isle of Kareem, I believe. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ethel in New Hampshire. Hello, Ethel. Hello. Every time I talk that to was, you... That was two shoop shoops and a ping. Oh, two, you stop. You're, yeah. getting, shoop, shoop, you're getting sicker. I yes, can't uh, hear you. You can't hear who? Uh, any of us? No. <laughs> what, what kind of a radio station is this? This one. No, no, I'm because I can hear everybody. I, think, I have a, pe a feeling people listening on the radio can hear us all. If they can't, uh, it's their problem. Let them put on a record. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't bug oh, me. one of our other stations we own. I'm, I'm doing. We're doing the best we can. You I'll know. hear you better now. Oh, well, I see. Okay. Uh, now let's. Uh, I think it would be a good time to play the uh, dumb birthday game, don't you? Guys? Every time Yay. I talk to you, to you, Ethel, though, I, I think of uh, my sister-in-law, whose name is Ethel, and who also lives in New Hampshire. But you don't live in Nashua, do you? No, I live in Portsmouth. Oh, Portsmouth. That's right. Well, as you know, that's one of my favorite towns. Right. Cause your daughter's here. My daughter is here. She's a, she's here at that very moment, but uh, she's leaving Portsmouth to return oh. to her native home where people love her. Thank you. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, let's let's play the uh, anyway. Play the dumb birthday game. I'll tell you the names of people born on this date, and uh, ping or however you want to do it. Guess their ages, and uh, and whoever gets the most correct answers or most nearly correct answers uh, wins a really big piece of junk. <laughs> Maybe stock in this station. Something here. from the new studio. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> the, the the total quality. System, yeah. Okay, Meryl Streep, born Mary Louise Streep, hmm. in Summit, New Jersey. She won an Oscar for Sophie's Choice, and uh, Kramer versus Kramer was nominated for many more. Starred in House of Spirits, Bridges of Madison County, River Wild, Postcards from the Edge, Death Becomes Her with uh, Bruce Willis and Goldie Hawn, and River Wild. I, I think I said River Wild. Yes, you did. I did say that. After winning the award for Kramer versus Kramer, she realized that in all the excitement, and we mentioned this early when I talked to that fellow who wrote the uh, Celebrity Birthday book, she had left her Oscar in the ladies' room, in the ladies' room stall. I yeah, get that's right. I couldn't read the word stall. And though that's even worse, isn't it? Not by the sink, but in the stall itself. She'd leave it on like the dispenser or something, leaning up against the side. No, right in the stall. Well, might have been right on the tank. Oh, right on the tank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 there's no finish to the story. I saw. I and when she, she discovered that it was missing, she felt flushed. I'm sorry, all I heard was a push ping oh. man inside of there, any human voice. Uh. <laughs> uh, Richard, let's start with you. Meryl Streep, how old do you think she is today? June 22nd, her birthday. Uh, 47. 47. Okay, Dorothy, what do you think? That sounds good to me. You want to keep, you want, uh, 47 is okay with you? Right, was that Richard? That was Richard, yes. Yeah. Did you want to flirt with him or anything? No, I just didn't know which player it was. Yes, that's, that's the player it was. Mm -hmm. And this is Steve, uh, Stephen Newton. Uh, what do you uh, think? Uh, 52. How much? 52. 52. Is that what he said? 52, yes. Okay. Ethel, I'll translate then as we go along. <laughs> Ethel, how old do you think Meryl Streep is? Uh, 45. Ethel said 45, Tony. <laughs> Thanks, Norm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, Jack, what do you think? Uh, well, for the benefit of everyone else who's playing, I think that she's uh, 46. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, but I'll mark down 46. <laughs> okay. 46 is what you did say, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Tony, what do you think? Oh, she's 45 shipping today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, she's 47. Ooh. Ooh. So Richard, Dorothy, uh, both, both said 47, so they hit it. Right on the old button. Was the, you betcha. I was thinking this was last year. You thinking she was 47 last year? No, I was thinking that this was last year. Oh, I see. When I, you, you you picked it up when I said she's 47 this year. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I was in a little bit of a time warp. That's why he guessed 46, because he thought it was last year. Oh, oh would you both stop? <laughs> uh, Ruth, uh, not Ruth, but Ralph. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ralph Waite, W-A-I-T-E, the actor, he played the father on the Waltons uh, TV series. Okay. And he played Slater in Roots in 19, that was 1977. He also had a part in Cliffhanger and The Bodyguard. That's a Ralph Waite. Uh, say, uh, Tonto, why, uh, why is uh, Ralph standing around? And doing nothing. Yeah. Ralph Waite. No, see, you have to do you have to do a bigger voice. Say, oh, is Ralph or oh, Tonto? Why is Ralph hanging around doing? He said, follow my lead now. Okay, <laughs> Ralph, uh, not Ralph, but Tonto. Why is Ralph <laughs> hanging around doing nothing? Oh, uh, Ralph, oh, uh, wait. Excellent, see. excellent. I oh, see. I was tossing that to you. You see. Oh, I see. I was, I was thinking that you might have grabbed okay. it. Okay, your mom might now. Someone see. would show up for rehearsal every once in a while. You know. <laughs> He's too busy looking for traffic. <laughs> Tony, what do you think? How old is Ralph Waite, father, in uh, the Waltons? I'll get back to you, okay? Yeah. I'll be home uh, about uh, 6 <laughs> o'clock this morning. You, you call me there. Uh, Ralph Waite. Ralph Waite. Ralph Waite. Yes. Um, hang on here. Uh... 
77 was what? Root. Was Roots? Yeah, Root. He did say Roots. Uh, 77, yes, he was played Slater in Roots. <laughs> in seven, seven to seven. <laughs> so that's almost 20 years ago. 19 to be exact. Yeah. So yeah. probably, probably that then, which would make him this now, and that is 68. 68. Okay, what do you think, Jack? Mm, 72. 72, okay. Ethel? I'm going to say 71. 71, and what would you say, Steve? How about 70? 70, okay. Dorothy? Uh, 71. And Richard? Okay, 68 is correct. That's no what kidding. Tony oh, yeah. said, you're right on the button. 68 years old today. How about Ed Bradley, the uh, CBS guy? How about him? That's right. He works for us, you know. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, so we can give him any age we want. Yeah, that's right. And he'll take it. Otherwise, I'll fire him. Out the door. A CBS correspondent on 60 Minutes. Uh, he wears an earring, which it says is novel for someone his age. Hmm. I, I never noticed. That a few years ago. What's that? He did that a few years ago. Oh, does he not wear it now? Uh, he, no, I think he still wears it. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Oh, it's it's ago. been it's been a few years since he's been wearing it. I never noticed that. He's also the host of Street Stories. I don't think that's on anymore. Street Was the host of Thank you. of the late Street Stories. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about uh, how about uh, Ed Bradley, Steve? What do you think? Mm, how about sixty nine? 69. Okay. And what do you think, uh, Dorothy? The speed limit, 55. The speed limit, 55. Okay. Make sure you, make sure you repeat those, Norm. Thank you. Cause I will happy to do 55. This is you, me, and Jack on the phone to, to me. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear Jack okay, though. Yeah. Yep. But you can't hear Ethel, One Steve, of the Dorothy, or Richard. Hear. Okay. Everyone else pretty much sounds like mosquitoes buzzing in my ear on a hot summer night. <laughs> Wow. wow, that's picturesque. Isn't that the way he said that? That was nice. Yes. Jack, what do you think? How old is Ed Bradley? Who comes still reeling from that colorful image? <laughs> uh, did you know that the buzzing mosquitoes is the male and will not sting you? It's the ones that are quiet you have to watch out for. That's right. Um, Isn't that the story of life itself? Yes. <laughs> my, grand, my Hungarian gypsy grinch's grandmother used to say things of that nature. She no used kidding. to say, yeah, show, me, show me a mosquito that is quiet, that will not... Uh, that will not hold back and, and until it inflicts harm upon your body. Show me that kind of a of a of a mosquito. Yeah. And I'll show you my son Jaime. <laughs> <laughs> was Jaime one. was a quiet boy. He was a very quiet boy. Went around biting people. It sucked the blood right out of you. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you could squeeze your arm and hold them there. Um <laughs> Let's see. Uh, do, who are we talking about? Ed Bradley. Oh, Ed Bradley. Yeah. Uh, he is. Uh, show me. Pardon me. Oh, no, go ahead. Um, show me a man. Is another one of hers. Yeah. Show me a man who, even though he gets on network television, is individualistic enough to put a uh, a, 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 a what in his ear? Earring. An earring. That's right. That's why they call it that, isn't it? Yeah. That is. He's a, he's individualist enough to put an earring in his ear. Uh -huh. A man who has enough faith and confidence in his own maleness. <laughs> show me that kind of a man, and I'll show you a friend of mine who's a sissy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little different than most of her sayings. And well, she was ahead of her time, then. She was really ahead of her time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, what would you guess there for Ed Bradley, uh, Jack? Uh, Ed Bradley. Well, let me see. A novel for... Let me see. What age would you have to be for an earring to be novel? <laughs> hmm. Well, <laughs> probably if you're a guy, most any age. <laughs> uh, I would say he's 57. 57. Okay. That'd be pretty novel. That's pretty novel. Richard, what do you think? 61. 61. What town in Delaware do you live in, Richard? Seifer. How do you spell that? S E A F O R D. Oh, Seaford. Yes. Okay. And uh, Richard says 61. I don't know whether you got that, uh, Tony. Thank you. What do you think? How old do you think uh, Ed Bradley is? I have it. I have it there, right? 
that's just thought I'd let you know. Yeah, see, nobody really cares, you know, so there's no <laughs> actually, reaction actually, to that actually, at all. Actually, I have two. Now, does anyone care? No, nobody cares. <laughs> no, they just want to know how old you are. Is it awful for me, or is it just well, weird? Well, no, you're, you're, not, you're not 57. Okay. Or however. That's right, that was Jack's guess. Well, that's my way of thinking, yeah. Yeah, no. That's okay. Rosley. Yes. This is a very long game, isn't it? We've hardly begun. <laughs> Ed Bradley is. <laughs> Maybe we can continue this on one of the other stations that we own. Sure. We'll just we'll do a traveling birthday game. <laughs> we'll syndicate it on all the stations. That's right. If the game is not finished by five o'clock, it's picked up uh, by uh, W O D S, the oldie station. <laughs> <laughs> Only people born in the fifties, though. Yeah. That's right. You can hear the game on WBZ at 3 a.m. at ODN at 2 a.m. <laughs> this is like old-time radio where you have to repeat all the stuff that the callers are saying. That's right. <laughs> Hello, telephone? <laughs> there used to be a guy in Boston that did a talk show that way. So uh, how's your family? Pretty good, huh? And, uh, oh, really? Your your daughter has uh, has the hiccups? I, you know, and it would go on and on like that. Who did that? I give a guy. guy named Jim Fitzgerald. And also Kenny Mayer yeah. uh, used to do that. But Jim Fitzgerald was on about 8 million years ago, and he used to do that kind of a talk show because he couldn't put the caller on the air. And maybe that's just as well. I think well, once they start figuring out put the caller on the air, I think radio went down the toilet. Hey, we're almost back to the old days now because I can't hear some of them. So. <laughs> Okay. You have to tell me what they're saying. She said she has a cold, daughter. Ed Bradley, Ed is, Bradley is 62 minutes old. 62 minutes old, mm -hmm. I see, see. Uh, Ethel, what do you think? I don't know. I've lost so hard. I've lost track. Uh, um, we all have. That's the glory of all of this. I, I see 61. 61. You've seen, I know you've seen 60 minutes, just as uh, everybody has. Oh, yeah. And you know which one is Ed Bradley. Oh, sure. He's the one with the earring in his ear, <laughs> which is which is quite novel, you know. Yeah. It's novel to have an earring in your ear when you're that age. A lot of uh, guys that age usually wear them on the back of their necks. <laughs> and when you're much younger, it's only pamphlet. Yeah, it's kind of funny when you say that because you see you Pamphlets. see you see some people you know with earrings on their tongues and on their navels and all over their the place. Eyebrows. Oh, it's so painful! I can't bear to watch it. Chin. Yeah, it's probably I can't bear to watch it because I got earrings on my eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you blink, you scream. Oh, it's painful, but just so in vogue. <laughs> Ed Bradley is 55, which is Dorothy's uh, guess. She said the speed limit, remember? So, uh, Dorothy has two correct answers. Richard has one, and uh, Tony has one. And Billy Wilder, the producer... A movie director with some great movies. He won Oscars for The Lost, the Lost Weekend. Uh, remember that was Ray Milland, who was a, an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And uh, The Apartment, which was a movie I loved with the Shirley MacLaine and, Jack, and Jack Lemmon and Fred McMurray. And uh, I fell in love with the Shirley MacLaine during that movie. I don't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not too too unsure of myself to to admit that. <laughs> well, I loved her desperately. She was the elevator operator. Anyway, Fred McMurray was trying to bed her, as I recall. Trying to bed her? Bed her, yeah. Uh -huh. when he direct, but they, they bedded much much more politely back in those days. Though. It wasn't like <laughs> movies today. When he directed Sunset Boulevard, he told a cameraman, keep it out of focus, I want to win the Foreign Film Award. I never heard that one. <laughs> keep it out of focus, I want to win the Foreign Film Award. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> Billy Wilder. But he's turned out uh, he's turned out some some incredibly good movies. Did I say one? Some like it hot. That was his movie. Also, he did some some really great ones. You know, uh, when you mentioned the word bed, yes, it brought to mind. When did the box spring become a foundation? The box spring became a foundation in 1933. You know, you don't and if that's not correct, I'll give you a few more answers because I really don't know. You don't get a mattress in a Palm spring now. They say it's a mattress and foundation. Mm. Oh, is that what they call it yes, now? they well, call it a foundation. Well, I just want to know when it came, became a foundation. Oh, it's I ever see. since they started to improve it and improve it and improve it until it became like a block of cement. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like you have to have the construction guys to come down and dig a hole in the room. Yep, yep, and uh, and in some of the more monumental beds, they come down and lay a cornerstone. That's right. 
Do you mind if I continue? Oh, no, or, not at all. Or is this hilarious conversation <laughs> going to continue <laughs> right into every other radio station that we now own? <laughs> yes, masonry today in the bedroom. Okay, Ethel, what do you think? How old is Billy Wilder? Oh, my gosh. I Great, might a bricklayer, but you know, yeah. never mind. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tonto. <laughs> Tonto, how come uh, Billy is going completely out of his mind and is frothing at the mouth? Uh, Billy. More so even than yesterday. <laughs> I'm moving so fast. Billy Wilder. No. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, Ethel. Please continue. I, I didn't mean to talk over you. That's I guess okay. I did or I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> no, I thought I'm moving so fast, so I'll say 70. Seven, I don't know. 70 for Billy Wilder. Okay, Richard, what do you say? Uh, 76. Seventy spirit. Okay. Uh, Steve? <laughs> About uh, 62. 62. Okay, Dorothy? Billy Wilder, what do you I'm think? I'm flirting between 80 and 90. You are? What'd she say? She's flirting between 80 and 90. Oh. Mm. How old is Billy Wilder? <laughs> I'll take it from the top. I'll take 90. 90? Hmm. Okay. Uh, what do you think, uh, Tony? 86. 86, and Jack? Hmm, I was thinking he must be a 1,000. Uh, I thought he was dead. <laughs> yeah. Is that older than a 1,000? I thought he was colorized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he and Methuselah are just sitting around. Um, do, do, do. He, uh, 92. 92. Oh. He's, he is 90. Huh. Oh. Dorothy, you've been, you've been hitting him pretty, pretty good. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Think of something last night when you were playing the music quiz. Yeah. Huh? I was tempted to call in with a question about the Broadway play Promises, Promises, based on the apartment. Did you ever see it? Oh, no, I haven't. I'd forgotten it was based on that. That's right. Oh, it was great. No, I didn't. I didn't, uh, I didn't get to see that. Did, I, I, did you have you seen it? I remember one of the actress's names. She wore a coat made of turkey feathers. One of the actresses in in uh, Promises, Promises. Wow. Yeah. Is that from whence the uh, Dionne Warwick song "Promises, Promises" uh, mm -hmm. comes? Yeah, yeah. That's that's the title song of the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Chris Christopherson. Uh, today's his birthday. Also, mm -hmm. uh, born Christopher Christopherson. No kidding. It sounds like a joke, but that is Christopher Christopherson well, in Brownsville, Texas. Wrote. Help me make it through the night. Me and Bobby McGee, and for the good times, his biggest hit, "Why Me," in 1973. He co-starred. Uh, he the, the hit was in 1973. He co-starred with Barbara Streisand in "A Star Is Born." He was in a TV movie, "Christmas in Connecticut." Married three times and has six children. Named Father of the Year in 1988. Hmm. Christopher Christopherson. Wow. Uh, Christopher. Yeah. No, is that Christopher? Christ would that be Christopher? It's spelled the same as the beginning of Christopherson oh, without the sun on the on the back of it. Yeah, I think the sun kind of changes the uh, the inflection. So it should be Christopher Christopherson? Christopher Christopherson. That sounds like a folk song, doesn't it? Christopher Christopherson was late for supper. Christopher Christopherson was late. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like oh, that's especially the way you sing it. That's really something. <laughs> Packed his lunch, went away to West, and his folks never saw him again. <laughs> oh, uh, she's too fat. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Steve. What do you think? How old is Chris Christopherson today? Do you think? Fifty-five. Fifty-five. Okay, and uh, let's see, uh, Dorothy. What do you think? I think he's older than that. That's how much older? That's a question. on a washing machine? 61, maybe? 61, maybe, okay. Uh, Ethel, what do you think? Who knows? Um. <laughs> <laughs> and who cares? <laughs> That's kind of the, uh, the implication there. I'm listening to two radio stations. I don't know. Um, You're listening to two radio stations? I'm getting another radio station at the same time. Um, on your phones? Yeah. On the phone? Oh. Yeah. Well, we have so much radio stations here. We own so many. I know. We're going to have to put three or four of them on at the same time. You're really blessed. <laughs> yeah. Actually, oh, we really had that problem. At the okay. Um, yes. Uh, 
I, I don't know how old he is. He's probably 55. Probably he's 55. Okay. And uh, Richard? 54. Richard says 54. And what do you say, Jack? 52. 52. And uh, Tony? 62. 62. 62. Wow. Okay, he's actually 60. So no. you're close, Tony, but Dorothy oh. said 61. Oh. oh. So she's walking away with this thing. She's got four correct answers. She and one apiece <laughs> by Richard and uh, Tony. And I've got five losses. Five. And so is Steve. And so is Jack. Yeah. And so is <laughs> and so is Jack. That's right. Bill Blass, you know the designer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's That's see. That pair of glasses made by him. Glasses by Bla by Blass. Yeah. Such a busy man made you a pair of glasses. Yeah, yeah. I, I picked up some Bill Blass frames about six hundred years ago, and for some reason I don't need glasses anymore. <laughs> he fit, he's they were so good. They corrected the they problem. Corrected I don't even need glasses anymore. Wow. I okay. actually have. I actually. I, I'm going to brag now. Do you mind? Give me a moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have 2015 vision. 2015. That's better than 2020. Yeah, obviously. it is. That's the doctor. <laughs> Excuse me, 2015. <laughs> that's excellent. That's excellent. That's one I can see from from uh, here to to the 413 <laughs> area. That's code. right. I can almost see through walls. <laughs> uh, famous. Uh, uh, sometimes on a clear day, I can almost see the wall if I get close enough. <laughs> <laughs> famous for women's and men's clothes, furs, luggage, grooming products, and eyeglass and, cho and chocolates. Bill chocolate? Blass chocolates? And eyeglass frames, too. That's right. The Bill Blass, uh, what are they called? Cu not customized. There's the other word. Uh, designer? Designer, yeah. Designer chocolates. In fact, that's what they're called. Yeah, designer chocolates. What, do they have a nice lining? I don't really know. A little, probably a little short, nice little cue to him on. I don't have no, I have no idea. <laughs> Bill Blass, designer chocolate. Designer chocolate. chocolate. No, they've been out for a few years now. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Why do they ever have a fashion show for designer chocolate? Uh, probably <laughs> do. And here comes a lovely cream pill. <laughs> <laughs> it's showing a short leg this year. Okay, let's uh, let's start with you, uh, Jack. What do you think? How old is Bill Blass? Bill Blass and his designer chocolate fingers. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. How old would you be were it till we'd be novel to design a chocolate? I'll say he is 64. 64. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what do you think, Richard? 66. Richard says 66. And Steve says? 68. 68, okay. Really? Yeah, 68. Okay. Dorothy? Seventy-one. Dorothy says seventy-one, and what do you say, Tony? That's what I was going to say. Seventy-one. Okay, Ethel? Yeah, I'll say seventy-one, too. Okay, <laughs> you all who said seventy-one uh, would come the closest, although he's seventy-four. Oh, oh, what do you know? Yeah, so we got uh, Dorothy, what news, <laughs> and uh, Ethel, and Tony. Tony has two... So he's the closest to Dorothy, but Dorothy has five. Wow. You know, you, it looks like, well, you are the winner. There's nobody can get, get caught up with you now, Dorothy. That means that <laughs> delivered to your home in New York State. Is it Cortland? Uh, no, no. Betty is Cortland. No. Oh, now, where, where, in, where in New York are you? Pleasantville, New York. It's oh, about Pleasantville. 30 miles north of Manhattan. Oh, that's Pleasantville, what? New York. That's the re that's re Reader's, Reader's Digest, Digest country, yes. I'm a true infinity child because I listen to the New York stations, CBS and WYNS. Well, that, yeah, they're both... Uh, and you. Yeah, that's Westinghouse also. That's these, right. So, so I'm... I'm you, sort of brand allegiance, you, you, right? I think that's really lovely, Dorothy. Now, if you win the the Reader's Digest sweepstakes, do they uh, do you have to like forfeit the limousine to their front then door? Then they give you a free trip to Pleasantville. <laughs> then they send you a token for the bus. <laughs> oh, but I got a news yesterday about the birth of a new horse. You know, my sister-in-law who has the Garrison Pony Club. Yeah. One of her horses had a baby yesterday, oh. and the mother, believe it or not, is 19. 
Really? Yes. Wow. The stud horse from Vermont must have really powerful whatever. Because <laughs> usually it's the other way around. It's usually the, uh, the you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the father could be older, and the mother usually is, a, she's the one who bears the child. So that's kind of odd. I think we're getting funny noises now. Did somebody hang up? I guess when I said Dorothy is probably one that I have a feeling somebody hung up. Let's see who hung up. Let's do let's do just one more. Lindsay Wagner. Uh, Lindsay, Lindsay Wagner, the uh appeared uh, uh let's see, appeared as the bionic woman on TV's Fire in the Dark and Nurses on the Line. Uh Lindsay Wagner anyway, the bionic woman. Uh Richard, are you there? Are you there, Richard? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, how old do you think Lindsay Wagner is? If you'd like to make a call, please hang up. No, we want to know how old Lindsay Wagner is. Uh, now, that's, uh, somebody obviously hung up. Uh, Richard, are you there? Yes, I am. I'm sorry, I just asked you that. Steve, are you there? I think Steve is the one who hung up. Steve? Okay, we got... So we, we, Norm? Yeah, okay. Are you, yes? Oh, uh... uh I'm okay, Richard. No, how I'm, I'm sorry, Norm. I was calling. I was trying to get, you know, calling your name, and you weren't answering me. And now you were answering me. I was trying to tell you there was a dial tone on the air. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, I know that. Well, was, you could hear that. Okay, I don't. Yeah, know. no, no. That was uh, that was uh, Steve who uh, apparently has hung up. Oh, okay, I. Okay, Richard. You couldn't hear me. I don't know. I don't know. No, I, we we have a few bugs to iron out here. I can see that. I thought I had fixed everything, but I'm going to have to hang around after I go off the air at five. I've got my screwdriver and a crowbar in the car, and we'll we'll take care of all of this. It'll be okay. <laughs> the studio looks nice, so if it doesn't work, I mean, one out of two isn't bad. Uh, Richard, how old do you think Lindsay Wagner is? Fifty-four. Fifty-four. Okay, Dorothy? Fifty-two, maybe. Okay, Steve? No, I'm, I'm sorry. Steve is the fellow who hung up. Uh, Ethel? Fifty-three. Okay, Jack? 48. 48. And uh, Tony? I like the way Dorothy says, 52 maybe? Because <laughs> five right. 52 maybe? I think I'll go with 52 maybe. <laughs> you want to do 52? <laughs> sure. Okay. Jack is actually closer. He said 48 and oh. she's 47. You duped me, Dorothy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she figured she'd won anyway so she could blow one. Uh, so that means Dorothy has won. And I really thank all the rest of you for playing this swell game. And uh, that means you'll get a whole bunch of junk, uh, Dorothy, and help yeah, my house. Yesterday was my birthday, so I was interested in what Mr. Davenport was talking about yesterday's birthdays. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Today, today's Saturday, uh, the yeah, but 22nd. Minus, this is yeah, your... I'm six months minus a day or plus a day different from you. You're December 20th. That is correct. And I'm yeah. June 21st. Oh, uh, six months. Oh, oh you're June 21st. Right. Okay, are we this, you're you're younger than I am. You must be, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to dial the phone or anything. <laughs> I wish that Helene would call in. I missed her last night. I thought she'd be calling in last night. No, I haven't talked to her for a couple of weeks now. Right. She may be on vacation somewhere. That's she didn't play the music quiz last night? No, she did not. Oh. No, no. no, she didn't call in. Okay, so we have, uh, anyway, hold on, Dorothy. We'll take your name and address, so... Thank I can reduce much. the I can reduce the clutter in my own house by sending you a lot of the junk stuff that I don't want anymore Thank and have so absolutely much. no use for. <laughs> and will you stop thanking me while I'm saying these awful things? <laughs> okay, uh, hold in a, uh, hold on and and, uh, and talk with Tom Howie, our big time producer, and uh, I I will thank you, uh, Ethel. Thank you very much for taking part in all this, and my best to you in Portsmouth. Thank you. Did I win one of them? Yes, you did. You you got this last uh, the uh, Bill Blass one. Oh, you, you said you you said seventy one. You were one of three who said that. Oh, good. And so yes, you did. You 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 were not scoreless. Oh, thank you. The only the only people who were scoreless were Steve, who uh, apparently hung up in disgust, <laughs> and uh, Jack, who stays with us because he's got to stick around for another traffic report. Oh, his voice is so great. And <clears throat> you know, I just wanted to tell you just quickly, uh, all those shows are still on the air. Those bad shows. I'm sorry, which bad shows? Like you... uh, Jerry Springer and Jenny Jones. Oh, yeah, no, not all of them. There was, I think there used to be, I know Jenny Jones is, 
and uh, Tem and Tempest. And, oh yeah, Haraldo's really upgraded his show quite a good deal, I think. Tempest yeah, was canceled. Uh, oh, Tempest was canceled. Yeah, Springer. I don't know how. He's just got on. renewed for six years. For which six I find years. Yep. Oh wow. Yeah, he's still on. Yeah. Okay. I but, can't believe that they did that. And Rolanda, I see her on occasion. And she just seems so phony. She's so whoopee do yay, and you know, and acting. <laughs> she sounds. She looks like she's acting a role in a in a Broadway show, uh, pretending she really cares about what these people are saying. But anyway, but but the, there are uh, some of them have gone off. There's Mark. What's he's gone. Wahlberg. 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 He's, he's still on, but he's uh, he's on he's on borrowed time. Apparently, is that was yeah. just saying. Oh, he's he, yeah, on. he's been canceled too. They're just. They don't have enough shows stockpiled to last through whatever, and then that's it. They, they've been all canceled, yeah. Yeah, oh. Danny Bonaduce, yep. Carney Wilson. Yep. Canceled. Oh, that's canceled, right. Carney the, was the uh, rather chunky lady. Oh, yeah. 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 She's gone. Okay. I have a show coming out in the fall. And, and Tony, yeah. Tony. Tony, Tony yeah. Tony, Tony. You know, this time, you know, you know, you know I'm getting dangerously late here. I forgot to look up at the clock. <laughs> Uh, so, anyway, uh, thank you, Richard. I appreciate you being with us. It was a pleasure. I had a lot of fun, Norm. Oh, thank you very much. I, I appreciate you saying that. And, well, and also, uh, TFRC, who would that be? Would that be me? Traffic? Oh, traffic. That's <laughs> right. That's you. Either that or somebody's terrific. <laughs> That's yeah. terrific. That's right. It says terrific Jack. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thank you and Tony both. I oh, appreciate thank you. I appreciate having I'm gonna have to go very quickly. And Ethel, thank you very much. You're welcome. Next time I plan to record everything completely overmodulated because well, we want to win a foreign radio award. I do think the cold I've had may just be some early signs of a relapse of shipping disease. I really need this to go away so I can taste some of these Bill Blast designer chocolates. Oh well, closing the vault and riding the radio waves home. For Norm's Hungarian gypsy princess grandmother's son, Jaime, the total saturation of the daytime TV talk show airwaves back then. Box Springs and or Foundations. Jim Fitzgerald, Kenny Mayer, WODS, Tonto, Body Piercings, Producer Tom Howie, the arrowboard beanie-wearing Jack Hart, and the man who's individualistic enough to pierce his eyelids, Norm Nathan. I'm the earring-clad Tony Nesbitt. Shipping! <laughs>